Although chronologically removed from each other, the geographical attributions of the Rab Kamani, referring to provinces, provincial capitals, and other places in the Assyrian center, Nineveh, Maganuba, and north of it, Bertu, indicate that several such officials were active for the royal household at a time. There is no indication that they were hierarchically organized, but instances where the office of the Rab Kamani is listed together with the provincial governors suggest that there existed one main representative. As already pointed out, the chief cook of the royal household was not active as an actual cook in the palace kitchen, but rather he managed the supply of livestock for the urban centers. Apart from functioning as a representative of the department that delivered the foods, different types of meat, as far as preserved, that were served for the royal dinner, the chief cook was primarily concerned with the acquisition of the living animals. He obtained cattle and sheep inter alia via the distribution of tribute revenue by the palace and as tax payments from the provinces. Regarding the latter source of supply, the chief cook occurs in connection with what seems to denote a tax on domestic animals drawn from the offspring of the animals at one's disposal. This is the case in an administrative document dealing with levied oxen and sheep, according to which the department of the chief cook is in charge of 140 oxen meant for offerings. Also in another administrative record the chief cook ward is provisioned with 71 old or dead mules. When an official active in the northwest claims that he has no resources for taking care of and feeding the oxen of the palace that were assigned to him, these might have been the very animals that the chief cook took over after they had been properly fed or fattened in the provinces. For instance, a broken administrative document records in total 1,998 grain-fed sheep, distributed over various different provinces and other administrative units, of which 1,522 sheep were in the charge of the shepherd, of the meal or banquet. Due to his interest in fed and fattened livestock, the chief cook was associated with shepherds, as is clear from the case of a chief cook who was in charge of three palace shepherds. The use of the livestock managed by the chief cook was manifold. Though also working animals were organized by the chief cook his main concern seems to have been to cover the demand for livestock occasioned by culinary, cultic, and scholarly activities. In the first place, we would expect the chief cook of the main palace to have been responsible for the acquisition and delivery of domestic animals intended for the ordinary consumption of the king and his entourage. However, we not only lack concrete evidence for the daily meal in the royal household, we also lack evidence for the chief cook's involvement in this matter. By contrast, we learn of festive banquets where large amounts of meat were offered and consumed, and several administrative records are preserved which list different types of meat and cuts of meat in association with offerings and their subsequent consumption. Similarly, the chief cook is attested in connection with livestock meant for offerings and other rituals. Although the general lack of concrete evidence for the daily meal is easily explained by the fact that the arrangements for it had no need to be mentioned or discussed in the royal inscriptions, the royal correspondence, and non-documentary texts, one wonders why the chief cook occurs in the administrative records especially in connection with offerings but not with livestock meant for the daily meal. The number of references to the chief cook's tasks is limited, but in view of the central role assumed by the consumption of offerings leftovers at the king's table, the chief cook's preoccupation as reflected in the sources is not a matter of accident. More so, if we take into account that the trauma caused by the killing of living creatures for the human diet had to be overcome by sacrificing activities and collective consumption in order to re-establish the cosmic order. The same author also states that, although on the basis of this principle every slaughter for meat was accompanied by ritual procedures, the circulation and way of consumption were certainly part of a system of distribution which had little or nothing to do with the economy of sacrificial meat in Mesopotamia. He also states that, palace and temple share in fact the same concern for meat provisioning but stresses that the maintenance of the gods was substantially different from the sustenance of human beings. Nevertheless, the economic processes of the palace in conjunction with its meat supply seem to have been closely connected to the Or Temple, especially, but not only during the cultic performances in the context of the New Year's festivities lasting from the 11th month to the first month of the following year. The number of livestock slaughtered on the occasion of these festivities was unsurpassed by the amount of meat produced in the context of any other event that took place at regular intervals. 
According to Papala, daily deliveries of leftovers from the New Year's performances provided enough meat for about 700 individuals, while up to 3,500 to 5,000 individuals could have been maintained on peak days since the performance of meat offerings in the Or Temple involved the slaughtering, cutting, and preparation of meat. The sanctuaries must have been equipped with, or surrounded by, appropriate areas instruments, and personnel in order to transform the living animal into the cooked dish. The Neo-Assyrian written sources indeed refer to slaughterhouses, kitchen facilities, and salt meat houses, in association with the Ore Temple. Staffed with a butcher and a salt meat man is known for the palace, but we lack evidence for special slaughterhouses and for separate facilities for the conservation of meat in connection with the palace. Although the slaughter and the processing of meat must have also happened in the domestic area of the palace, the supply of the royal household with meat seems to have been to a considerable extent organized via the Or Temple due to cultic requirements. The abundance of meat which was sacrificed in the Or Temple especially during the New Year's festivities produced such a surplus that the meat had to be conserved or passed on to other institutions. This is clear from a letter of Dodi who has been told by the temple scribe to forward to the akin to of the inner city leftovers of meat offerings that had previously been given to the salt meat house. Hence, regarding the consumption of meat, we can observe a reciprocal relationship between palace and temple, the latter being central for the meat supply for the royal household that was supervised by the chief cook.